All right, guys, welcome to another video. Um, for over the weekend, I got something massive for the um, the car from one of my good uh, suppliers, Jace. You know who you are, but this is an R32 cluster. Now I'm going to whack it in and see if it works with my car. Um, it is. My ECU is emo off or emo deleted, emo defeated because um, I, I got it tuned um, using a spare ECU. Didn't want to use the original ECU to muck about to have something um, and also to have something to fall back on just in case um, the ECU became, you know, cactus. So today is all about replacing the cluster. So it looks pretty ordinary, but I'm going to. You know, install it first, and then we'll get to the good part. All right, so back again. You've all seen, well, some of you have seen me do the uh, the dial inserts mod. Um, one viewer even came to came to me for for some help um, to get it installed on his car, which I helped him with. Um, hope that's still going well. Um, but what you need to do is to get the cluster out. Uh, you do need to undo the, the two bolts underneath T20, I'm going to say. Cluster comes out, then there's two um, uh, there's uh, two plugs behind, they're pretty delicate, so be careful with it. Um, get a screwdriver and just sort of manipulate the uh, attachments off, and off we go. So. Let's um, remove the cluster now. Alrighty, so I've got the cluster loose and just to show everyone, what you want to do is you want to flip this, um, I'm going to say clip, over and as you're flipping it, the, uh, the plug comes out at the same time. So I've actually snapped this before in one of my old uh, clusters um, and you don't want to do that um, right here. So there's two, there's one on each side, so I'll remove uh, that, I'll show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so, just to demonstrate, um, yeah, so as you're there it is. As you're undoing the clip, the um, it'll push the uh, plug out of the cluster. So um, that's it. So do do it on both sides, and um, should be good to go. Alrighty. So that's the cluster going in. Looks um, heaps nice. I mean, they both look nice, but R32 is just um, that much more nicer. So that's the back. Looks pretty identical. There's a plug back there in case you want to update um, the firmware. I'll talk more about that later. Oops. There's a wire coming out of it, and that's for, I'm told, the boost pressure. So, let's just finish the video before I uh, reveal what's happening. Alright guys, so I had to cut the um, 
the video off and just um, show you guys what I needed to do to um, modify a few things in the dash. Um, it looks like the dash works well uh, for the most part. Um, what it does do, um, which is really annoying, is flashing the uh, immobilizer um, light to say that the key doesn't match the dash. And you know, rightly so, because the dash does not belong to the car, it belongs to an R32. And it also shows um, no uh, oil or low oil readings. Um, and as you know, the GTIs of this era with this engine does not come with a oil sensor down below the sump. Um, later models did, but this one didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read read the dash information. I'm going to save the file. Um, onto the desktop somewhere, hopefully. Uses uh, Anya downloads. I'll pop it in here. It's easy. All right, so that's done. That's read it. And I'm going to use another program to the file ac a extract. So it's going to convert a few things for me. Um, a couple of nice things here. I'm going to turn on Needle Sweep, which I never had. I'm going to uh, disable the oil level, because I don't have it. And I'm going to disable the immobilizer activated message. Uh, and then I'm going to click Start. New EEPROM created under the dash done edit so it says new in the file and that's where it is so now go back to the dash okay so open okay that's the new file or oh, it's attempting to open the new file okay when that's done you want to then write to it. Here we go. So it might just take a while to um, connect up to the cluster, but when it does, you can write to it. Now I didn't uh, mention this before, but when you uh, before you do this, just make sure that um, you've got enough uh, power and um, your car's not dangerously low on battery where the voltage drops um, my battery's okay I've been um, driving it around and uh, it's holding charge but yeah so just let it run through its thing with the new file, uh, which you've created by actually. Actually, so all right. So the cluster has restarted, and um, yeah, I'll just uh, make sure that everything's okay. I'll go exit, close the app. Okay, that's all done. So. Switch off the car, switch it back on. Turn it back. Look at that! I did it! Right, so let's just, let's just explain a few things how I did it. Um, the oil sensor light was programmed off using um, just changing the EEPROM parameters using a few apps. The flashing um, light uh, for the immobilizer, what I did was I plugged my old ECU back in. Um, then I did a scan of the cluster and 
logged in and followed the key procedure to add the um, to adapt the key to the immobilizer for the original ECU. So now what I'll, what I'll do is I'll change the ECU back over to the tuned and defeated immobilizer and see if the light still um, remains off. If it remains off then I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. There's no errors um, except for the airbag light um, but I've coded that out in, anyway so that flashes a little bit and comes off. Um, there's no immobilizer light so that's I'm, I'm happy. Everything works as it should and it's looking pretty and it even has a needle sweep now. Let's see if I can trigger it. Yes. Good day now and it's um yeah, finally happy that I've got the cluster working. I'm going to put everything back together again. The cluster, the ECU, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, um, thanks a lot for watching the channel, and um, see you in the next video.